Professor Richman, and this is your Integrated Math 1, Unit 5.6, Lesson Summary. Unit 5.6 will be on solving exponential equations. We first ran into this issue of having to solve these in the very beginning of the chapter. We kind of just left it for the end. We wanted to explore graphing and things like that, and now we've come to the point where we can put it all together and try to solve exponential equations, figure out what we need to be, what we need to do process-wise to get an x out of that exponent position so we can solve it. So to help you understand that concept, what I'm going to do is start with this first situation. 2 to the box equals 2 to the 6. And let's just start there and you know, try to reason our way to an answer. So if I wrote that, you know an equal sign means these are equal. They need to be the same. So the bases are the same. I would just really need the exponents to be the same to get an answer. So logically, it would make sense then, if I put a 6 there, they're now the same. 2 to the 6 equals 2 to the 6. That would be the same thing for an exponential equation. And if I said instead 2 to the x equals 2 to the 6, you'd be able to look at that and go, well, the base is the same, so the exponents must be the same. So therefore, you'd probably tell me x must equal 6. And that is the actual process we're going to do to solve exponential equations. If we can make it so the bases are the same, then we can really ignore them at that point. They no longer matter to us. They don't affect the problem because they're the same. I just need the exponents to become the same, so I can take them and set them equal to each other. And easier examples, like the first two I'm going to do here, it gets you the answer right away. And more complicated examples, you might have to actually solve something after that. The other problem is, you're probably not going to be lucky enough to get them already written as a power. So when you get these, you need to look at the base you have, that's to your, that has the variable, and make the other side have the same base. And so right off the bat, the only first thing I'm going to do is this, regardless of what that other number is, because I know the only method I have to solve these is to make the base the same. Now I have to find out what power of 2 gets to 64. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. So 2 to the 6th power is equivalent to that. So I haven't technically changed the equation at all. The left side is still 2 to the x. Since 2 to the uh, 6 is 64, they're still equal. And now that the bases are the same, I can do the same thing I did up here. I can take them and write an equation for them. So x must equal 6. And I've solved that. Okay? When we move into the examples I'm about to do in a second, they're going to get a little more complicated. So I'm going to start here. Let's just say it's 3 to some power equals 81. Just like here, the only way I'm going to have to solve this is to make them have the same base, regardless of what's written in here. So 3 to the, let's see, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So 3 to the 4th. So what I need to do now, since the base are the same, is literally just set whatever's here, doesn't even matter what it is, I'll just put a little rectangle, equal to 4, and I should get my correct answer. And what you're going to see in the example we're about to do is they'll just have something here. It can be anything. I'm going to make it, uh, make it x plus 2. So as I fill that x plus 2 in, you can see nothing really changes. It just, whatever was in that expo exponent position becomes the left side of my equation. So I'm solving x plus 2 equals 4, which I solve doing normal linear solving steps. Subtract 2 to both sides, and I got my answer, x is 2. Okay, and you can check these answers. Okay, once you have it, plug it back in. 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 to the 4th power. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So it works, it's correct. Okay, now that you understand the basic principle of how to solve exponential equations, let's try a few different ones. And some will be a little tougher, but if you follow the same process, you should be okay. So our first one is 3 to the x equals 81. Okay, again, doesn't matter what it says, I have to make sure it has the same base. And actually, you know what, while we're at it, why don't we do that for all of them? It looks like I lost my number three here, so I guess we'll get rid of it. So let's go 2 to the 4x equals, and you're probably looking at that one going, what the heck? Doesn't matter, it has to be a base of 2. Here, 5 to the 9x, okay, base of 5 is already there, great. Here, a little trickier, but the only base I see is 3, so fine. 3, I uh, don't know what that's going to be yet, so let's leave it. 
and three. I know they both have to have a base of three to work. And here, base of two, this one has to also have a base of two. Okay? So you can see, I'm just trying to show you that it doesn't matter what the equation is. If it's exponential, I know that what I'm going to do is make the bases the same. Now I need to actually fill it in without changing the number. I need to know what power 3 gets raised to become 81. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So it's 3 to the fourth. Now that I see the base is the same, I just set the exponents equal, and I get my solution. Now here I've got to know some other properties of exponents. I've got to be careful here. I know it has to be 2, but I've got to think about what I can raise 2 to to become 1. And if you think back, anything to the 0 power becomes 1. So even a number like 1, I could use and change to a base I want. So 2 to the 0 is equivalent, so now I can set the exponents equal. 4x equals 0, divide by 4, my answer must be 0. And to double check, 4 times 0 is 0, 2 to the 0 is 1, looks good. Now here, 5 to the 9x equals 5, and notice I don't have an exponent to compare it to, but it can still be expressed. The way you keep a number to be itself as an exponent is 1. So that really, even though it's not written, has an exponent of 1. Base is the same. I can now set the exponents equal. 9x equals 1. Solve that equation. And x equals 1 ninth. Let's plug it in and check. 9 times 1 ninth. 9 over 1 times 1 ninth is 9 over 9, which is just 1. So I really just have 5 to the first power. 5 to the first power is 5. So my equation is correct. Okay, 5 to me is the trickiest one of them all. Okay, So let's start with the right side. I need 3 to become a power that becomes 243. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. Now right there you might start need to work that out a little longer. You don't know how to do those in your head. I wouldn't expect you to. 3 times 1 is uh, 3. 3 times 8 is 24. So 243. So just to check, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81, times 3 is 243. So it's to the fifth power here. The problem with this one is I need an exponent, but it, it needs to be on the bottom when I actually work it out. Okay, and if you think back to negative exponents here, we said. To get a power in the denominator, you make it negative. So a negative exponent will flip it. So since if this was, let's say, 1 over 3 squared, I'd make it 1 over 3 to the negative 2. Since it's x plus 5, I'm just going to make it 1 over 3 to the negative x plus 5. And because x plus 5 is the entire exponent, I need to make the entire exponent negative. So that's why I use parentheses. Okay? Now it's set up, they both have the same base, they would still equal their original uh, terms, and I can work it out. I'm going to set the equation equal, negative parentheses x plus 5 equals 5. I'm going to distribute that negative, negative x minus 5 equals 5. Isolate the variable, add 5 to both sides. So negative x equals 10, multiply both sides by a negative 1. And my x answer is negative 10. And I want to make sure that's correct, okay? especially with something uh, so long and complicated as this was. Negative 10 plus 5 is negative 5. So 1 over 3 to the negative 5. Let's try that over here. 1 over 3 to the negative 5. We haven't really seen that happen much yet, but if a negative exponent moves to the bottom, and it's already in the bottom, then it likely moves it to the top. So that is equivalent to 3 to the 5th. 3 to the 5th is 243. So we're good. Last one, I have 2 to the negative x equals 2, and I need an exponent that will get me to 1 half. Well, we just looked at negative exponents. To make it flip, use a negative. And I don't need the number to change, so I'm going to make it negative 1. Now I can set the exponents equal. Negative x equals negative 1. Multiply both sides by a negative. x equals positive 1. 2 to the negative 1 is one half in the original looks good. So this can be a tougher section because um, you haven't probably solved exponential equations before in previous classes, but if you stick to the steps here, um, it really can go really smooth. Steps again, make the bases the same, find the exponent that you need to have to do that, and then set the exponents equal. All right, good luck, thank you.